Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So on this video, I'm going to be fitting my new DRO to my Boxford mill. I've never fitted a DRO, so hopefully it goes all right. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. So for those of you that worked out in the last mill video, this is what the plug is for. So the bracket for the actual screen itself, I think if I bolt it to there, I can shorten this arm if I need to as well, but bolt it to there and then um, and then we can go from there and bolt that on. I want to get this on first so that everything can sort of be plumbed straight into it every time I do the next bit. So this is the linear scale. Now, a lot of magic happens here, and there's a little bit of sorcery as well, and some potions and stuff. Um, but um, I don't fully know how they work, but the best way I could describe them is they're similar to a vernier caliper, a digital vernier caliper. So as you move that, it registers on the display as a movement. I think they're photo cells from what someone saw. I said online that I saw. Now the thing is though, where do we mount them? So, I could mount them at the back, which a lot of people do, but the problem is this table goes all the way up to the back of the machine, so I don't want to do that. There is these stops here, so I think what I'm going to do is take these stops off, use those grooves to mount onto there, so it saves me drilling any holes, take that centre stop off, and then I'll just drill two holes there at the bottom, and as long as they're not too deep, it should be fine. I could also keep these locking bolt head sort of things for the bed as well. I think I can keep them in place. It'll go on there quite nicely then. And it won't be in the way really. Or I hope so anyway. So I've got the little plastic sort of protector in place. I'm going to use that as the sort of spacer to space this from that. The problem being that if it's too low, it'll grind, and if it's, it doesn't like being sat there, so it needs to sit up a little bit so it runs smoothly. Or well, that's how it feels anyway, because there's no instructions. So I'm just trying to work out how I can get these brackets to work on here to drive this. Because when you put the cover on, it needs to sort of come out, up, and then connect to there. Now I've got a really, hopefully, good idea. But what it involves doing is taking this bed off quickly. I forgot to press record on my camera, but I've taken both lead screws out is literally just a screw on the end on the handle you take the three bolts out that holds this sort of dial bit in and then uh, I need to loosen that up one of the reasons I'm taking this off as well is because these are bent up I think they're like the chip cleaners but there's obviously stuff wedged underneath them so I need to straighten them So 
So I've cut this plate down. I've drilled two holes in the saddle here. I bolted it on and I've squared it up to the edge because obviously the edge will run square up and down for the linear scale to sort of fix onto. Now we can put this back on and start bolting it back together. So to finish off this scale here, all that's left to do is cut this down so it closes up that gap and re-drill the two, the two holes at the bottom underneath. Then I can clamp that together and bolt it up and then this one's done, other than fitting that. Then I just need to do the last one. I tell you what, that has worked out really well. Look how close it is. Once the table goes back on, you won't see hardly any of that. So now there's just the Z axis, I think it is, which is the up and down. So there was a bit of backlash in this, uh, on this screw here, but I just found what the problem was. You probably can't see it, but there's a lip formed there for some reason on the thrust bearing. So I'm going to show you if I can get a new thrust bearing. It's actually so much so that it's kind of worn into there, but the bearing's also worn the other bearing surface there. So yeah, I'm going to see if I can get a new thrust bearing, and then I'll put it back together next week. It's the next week now, I've got a new thrust bearing here and I worked out how it got damaged. There's a little step just on on there and I think it's got pinched between that step. The backlash is much better now. I imagine the rest of that's in the lead screw now. To make this last gauge interact with the knee, I was going to try and TIG weld the alley, but I think there's zinc in it, so that wasn't any good. So I've came up with this. Now this was just a test piece, um, but it was to go that way around, so I've cut that there. I didn't cut this here because I was just testing it, but so it fits on there like that. Now from that I've able to get some measurements here. So I'm going to start by cutting that off and cutting down that line and then folding this out here. And this will basically be the tab that bolts on there. And then I'm going to fold that and fold that in the Miracle Bender. And that should make up sort of the standoff piece and up to there. And then I'll just need to do one more bend at the end here to finish it off. I'm using the little blocks behind it here because of that bend. I couldn't clamp it in the Miracle Bender otherwise. That works well. Now I've just got one final bend to do and a few cuts. Bracket's bent now, straightened it up, 
sorted the sides out, I drilled a couple of holes, annoyingly I had to elongate those two a little bit because of the sensor was rubbing slightly against the side there so hopefully that sorts that out but we can bolt it up now. I'm really pleased with how this bracket's come out. I put a little clip there to hold them and that's as loose as they get and then they stayed loose even when they're fully extended. I just need to hang that up there now as well. I've also finished the wiring. I wired in the suds pump and the new switch. So there's power down sort of below where the suds pump goes. I'm really happy with how this has came out. The brackets look great. Uh, I'm not overly thrilled with that one, but to try and get that one right, there's not much wiggle room with anything. So I don't really want to try and make it again. I've also wired in the suds pump as well. So it's got a new switch for that. And someone in the comments managed to work out what was wrong with the reverse function. There was one parameter I forgot to look at and there was about seven different parameters. So that one parameter sorted that out. Thank you very much to that person for helping me with that. Also, while I'm on this, thanks to all the new subscribers, things have been growing quite quickly lately. So I've been really pleased with that and I'm hoping for 20,000 subs by the end of the year if I can. We're already at 11 now, so we're doing quite well. Don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. It really helps my channel grow and me do more things like this. Let's get back on with the video though. I think we should make something with this, don't you? So if you haven't already noticed, there's a bit of a height issue with this, if I haven't already said as well. Now, the collet chuck that it came with is a good two or three inches long before you add a, any sort of cutter into it or anything. Also, the chuck having a rotary base on, I mean, that is literally all the way at the bottom right now and that's all it can cut. So what I'm doing here is making a new drawbar for my new collet chuck. So you can see it's about an inch shallower than that one. It's an ER32 collet chuck, so I've got all different size collets for it. The only problem was the drawbar wasn't long enough. Also, because someone's hammered these roll pins into it, it's actually made the top of it, you might not be able to see, but it's sticking up there and sticking down there. So it's actually bent it. I've just turned a new attachment so it goes in like that. And what I want to do on this one to make it a bit easier to use is just cut a 24mm socket head on it so I can put a spanner on it. I then have threaded it as well unlike the other one so I can change the drawbar for metric or imperial because you can get ISA 30 taper in metric and imperial threads on the end. So I've got this collet attachment here for 5C collets. I've got a 5C collet in there. I'm going to go and get a bit of threaded bar and put it in there and hold it to that. I didn't really think it through of how I was going to hold it when I was turning this so it's a bit of an oversight. That come out really well. Obviously because of the cutter there's a surface on it that I don't really like so I'm just going to put it back in the lathe on this surface here. I'm going to clean up the face and then just take a little bit of a cut on the corners there just because they're too sharp to sort of fit in a spanner right now and then I'll just clean that face up a little bit as well. Cleaned it up a little bit but that looks all right. Now I just need to make the drawbar to go through it. So I've made a new shaft now and the nut. We're going to ignore the fact that there's another shaft there because the thread was a bit marred up on the end of it or it didn't turn as nicely as I'd liked. What I'm going to do now is I want to just put some flats on I think this end because it can be a bit difficult to get the tool out as I found out yesterday when I wound one down or I wound a bad one down. But it's difficult to get it undone so I think if I put a 10mm flat on that I can put a 10mm spanner. We're working in 
metric so this is 12.62 so what's nice about this screen is if you I want if I wanted a 10 mil flat for example I would go 2.62 and then there's divided by 2 and enter so obviously it's quite quick and easy to do that anyway but what I can do is I need to touch the tool on there and go down 1.31 millimeters what I was hoping to do was use my little collet chuck thing here um, but because there's no through hole in the back I need to make some nuts up so I can have so I can pass stuff through because obviously as it stands I can't put things through because of that so what I'm planning on doing is I'll just put it in the chuck at any point go down 1.31 millimeters on the z-axis and then turn it over and I'll just clock in the flat on the bottom and then do the same again down 1.31 and the flat should be big enough then hopefully the reason I'm using a piece of paper is because it's 0.1 millimeter so when I touch that on the tooling between the part and the tool I then just need to add 0.1 millimeter to the z-axis which then gives me the height for the tool So 2.62 is obviously the difference between the 12.62 and the 10 mil. Um, so because I want it to be 10 mil for a 10 mil spanner, um, if I do 2.62, obviously I have to divide it by two because the I want one on either side. So we divide it by two and then enter. Obviously it gives us 1.31. Now we're zeroed on the top here. And what I just noticed that it does, if I press this ZO here, it puts a 1.31 on there. So now I can, I can just go down with that. You can also press that Z and then type in 1.31 like that. And it does the same thing, but it's even quicker like that. That doesn't matter. That's zeroed. So I've done it 10 mil from the edge of that over. And I'll do the same on the other side. So that's the flat put in the new shaft now. I might have to put a little grub screw in here, but we'll see how it goes. Obviously the machine isn't level right now, but I'm going to place this where I want it and level it there. One thing I specifically like about this DRO is that there's a few functions here, user functions, that help make your life a lot easier. So there's PCD, which is pitch circle diameter. So it helps you set up a circle. So I'll show you that quickly. So you can select XY, XZ and ZY or YZ. And depending on which one you push, the right hand box there changes. But we would be working on XY generally for anything I would be doing. And then it's selected on that box at the moment where you can see the black. So we'll go down and we'll just, let's just say for argument's sake that the radius is three mil and we're doing four holes, three mil, four, um, four holes on a three mil radius. The starting point is zero on the X and the Y because like that would essentially be on whatever I want it to be. So say there was something in there right now and we'll just select, select run. So the first position we need to go to is that red dot. So we have to zero the X. So we'll run it down to it's zero.
and then we can parameter change uh, sorry we select so say if we've done one hole now we've done that that's cut point one so we can then go to two so it tells us where we need to go to two it would probably be easiest to go to three right now and go six mil in the opposite direction But you can then go to four and two. Like you can work on the same plane, but you can just select. So it helps you line up everything. Obviously, that's just four holes. You could change it to have six holes or however many holes, but it works it all out for you, which is really nice. So this function is for linear holes. So again, you can select X, Y on the box there, and you can select your hole. So the coordinates would be obviously what that is there. Now, Obviously there's zero, so that would be the start point. The hole distance, so the distance between the holes, it shows you there a little diagram. Let's just say that we wanted five mil between the holes. And then you can have the number of holes there and the angle. So I've selected like a 45 degree angle. And we can then click run. So it shows us that we're at the first hole there. And then if I was to move to the second hole, that's what we have to move by, the third hole and the fourth hole. Similar function with many holes. I don't fully understand why you would need that one, but maybe if you was to make some sort of mounting plate for something, but there's another one there. It'd be quite handy on a bigger mill maybe. The last function I like is this one for cutting a radius or an arc. Now, there's, initially you start with the method, so it goes from the bottom up, but you can change the method so there's arrows here to change it you can go from top down like you can see all the different arrows anyway it's quite self-explanatory then you can select the radius so say we wanted 50 mil radius the tool diameter the cutting depth now the cutting depth, I mean, all of these show you charts, but say you wanted 10 mil, it's outside as well. You can select inside here, so you can cut inside a radius, but generally if I was to ever do anything like that, it would be outside. What's nice about that function is if I wanted to put a radius on something, I could at least rough it to the rough size before I then hand file it or whatever I do to finish it off. There'd be so many steps that you would have to cut with that. It would be quite a lot click run and then you can see there's nine points on it and each one slowly starts to create the radius now obviously there's going to be slight steps in it because you're using a flat cutter or whatever cutter you're using but it just helps you get the start of a radius so if you wanted to finish it off by hand as i say it'd be a bit easier this video is getting quite long now so i'm going to draw it to an end but i'm so happy with how this has come out to have a working DRO on all three axes is so great. It's such a nice size milling machine. This will work really well for me for all the jobs I've got planned in the future. Obviously you'll have to stay tuned for those. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.